ridiculous. Did you ever ask yourself these questions? Why am I so bound with anger lately? Why have I been so jealous lately? Why am I always so negative? How come I'm not on fire for God like I used to be? You have an intruder. Satan won your thoughts years ago when he said in your mind, is there really a God? And if there is a God, listen, why is there so much hatred in the world? Satan won your thoughts years ago when he planted this thought in your mind. If there really is a God, why does he allow little babies and innocent children to die? Satan won your thoughts when he put in your mind that just because you claim to be a good person, how could a loving God ever keep heaven away from somebody who is good and feeds the poor? Satan is the God of the thought life who is looking relentlessly every day at breaks and leaks and holes in the walls that the Holy Spirit has built around your heart. We call that the old life. Now, while the world is not looking because you keep us from seeing that, that's why we put makeup on it and pretend to the church and to friends and relatives that everything is just fine. The enemy is relentlessly, relentlessly looking for any breach. You guys know what a breach is? A breach is a crack or a hole, a tiny hole. Years and years ago, we had an ant problem in our house. We couldn't get rid of them. Those ants were coming through a tiny, teeny little crack in the, in the grout of our tile floor. You could not even see the crack, the hole with the naked eye. I want you to think of this. I want you to think of every thought that you thought last week as a hotel. I want you to think of it. One thought may have been your children. One thought may have been greed. One thought may have been lust. One thought may have been money. One thought may have been different things. And I want you to think of all those thoughts that went on in your mind as each one of them an individual hotel room. When one of those hotel rooms has a crack in the door and is kept unclean, it gives the enemy room to intrude. Now here's the problem. Although you are forgiven, past, present, and future, no matter what you did yesterday or a week, before, week ago or five years ago, you are forgiven. Put your hands to heaven and say, my past, my, past, my, present, my present, and my future, my future. Are, covered are covered in the blood. There is, there is. no condemnation. Amen. Amen. But here's the enemy's attempt. When he finds a crack in your integrity, he knows you're still wired with the Adamic nature. And as soon as you fall short of what you believe is good or bad, he knows you're wired deep enough into that Adamic nature to walk around with guilt and shame. He does, he, he does not want you to know that God's love is unconditional. Now I want you to take a look at 2 Corinthians chapter 10, and I want to read for you verses 3 through 6. Can I please hear an amen today? Amen. Good. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. Verse 4. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. We need to talk about what that means. Say it out loud. But mighty through God to the... Ah, there's that word stronghold. It's a biblical word. It's an important word. Stronghold. He says, although we walk in this flesh, we do not war after this flesh. 
Every time you walk in a sinful way, it doesn't mean you want to beat yourself up. Now in verse 5, he tells the believer how to fight these strongholds. Verse 5, read it with me. Now, now spark on that word imagination before. Casting down. Where do imaginations take place? That word in Greek is logimos. Imaginations is what word? Logimos. That means, listen to, the, listen to what logimos, logimos means. Reckoning, computations, hostile thoughts. And every high thing. See that word in every high thing? There it is right there. In every high thing. You want to know what that means in Greek? Tall building. Tall building. And every tall building, watch this, that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Let me read this Mike DeRoche way, the Mike DeRoche version. Every one of us in this room have imaginations, both dirty and both good. Those imaginations cause you to compute, cause you to reckon, cause you to contemplate. But any thought or imagination that you have that exalts itself against the knowledge of God's word must be brought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. That's called a stronghold. The stronghold that you have in your life, let's say it's bad, is because it begins with a thought. Anger begins with a thought. Before any man on this planet is ever murdered with a gun, it first enters the thought life. Now look at verse 6 over here. This is powerful. Would you read it out loud? And having in a readiness, say readiness. readiness. That word readiness means be prepared. Yes. To? Revenge. That word revenge means what? Punish. Every thought which exalts itself against the knowledge of God's word, like why would a loving God allow little babies to be killed? Why would a loving God allow children to get cancer? Why would a loving God allow my husband to get killed? On the, all those things, right? Those are thoughts that exalt itself above the knowledge of God's word. He says, having in readiness, be prepared to punish all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. So, strongholds are a byproduct of your thoughts, the flesh. The word says, capture the thought. Capture the thought. Say, capture, capture. my thought. My okay, you got it? Yeah. All right, I'm going to teach you at the very end of this how we do this, okay? Now, now look at me, because the enemy is using a lot of you folks and abusing you. He's using you and abusing you. Look at me. A stronghold protects the old life. A stronghold of philosophy and human reasoning protects the old life that you lost through the power of the Holy Spirit. The stronghold, the enemy, seeks to be in harmony with his environment. Did you catch that? Yes. Darkness has an environment. Sound familiar? Chaos, confusion, doubt, unrest, no faith. Amen? Amen. He seeks for you to be in harmony with that environment. But as a pastor, it is so painful. It's got to be the singular most painful thing for me. 
to watch those that I have invested so much in and mentored return to their vomit. Please look up here. I'm sharing my heart with you. This is not where my job ends and begins here. And most of you have spent many hours and much time with me, sitting with me at Dunkin' Donuts or God knows where, and I've poured my heart into you. Do you know how hard it is to pour my heart into people only to watch them to return to their vomit? It is painful to watch those who you invested so much in not be ready, not being ready to revenge all the disobedience when the obedience is fulfilled. Look up here, please. You will not hear from my lips, I hope ever, that I condemn you for doing wrong. What I condemn you for is for failing to realize that no matter what you do, that God and me still loves you. Amen. That's what I condemn. Most Christians have such massive holes in that wall that they allow the enemy to inflict and hinder and wreak havoc upon your life. Do you think that there is anyone sitting in this room does, that does not think that their sin is greater than the one sitting next to you? Everyone sitting in this room and listening to my voice believes that by no way, shape, or form can any sin ever match the sin that I've committed against God. And you are wrong, and that is a lie, and that is called, church, nothing but a stronghold. God loves you, and there is nothing you can do to ever take his love away from you. It is not, it is not us trying to, to, to take this flesh of ours and remodel it. It is not our job to try to tamper with or try to fix or repair this flesh. This flesh is filthy. Even the very good you do is filthy. Amen. Now, look at here. But the enemy has you over the barrel. If you don't know how much he loves you, you will walk in a state of condemnation and guilt. It would have been better for you to have never been saved than to have been saved and not known how deep his love is for you. And i got to tell you something, this is hard stuff, because you guys are a mature crowd. But I've learned over the years, I sit down with young people today, and I have long talks with them, and I say, it's better for you not to get saved than for you to get saved and not be prepared for what lies ahead. And I want you to look at a chilling, chilling uh, uh, chapter in verse. Look at 2 Peter Chapter 2 and verse 21 and 22. Verse 21, read it with me. For it had been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness, comma, then, comma, watch this, read it with me. After they, yeah, that means salvation, comma, to turn from the holy commandment delivered unto them. Verse 22. But it has happened unto them, according to the true proverb, comma, the dog is turned to his own vomit again, and so that was washed to the wallowing in the mire. Amazing. It would have been better for folks to have never been saved than to have been saved and allowed those strongholds to be breached. Think about that world. Think about the world of somebody that has met the goodness of the Holy Spirit 
Think about what it is to live this way, to have known the goodness of God, the righteousness of God, the forgiveness of God, the anointing of God, and then to fall from that state, to fall from that place of consciousness, and to live between two worlds. Satan made a bet with God when you got saved. He went to God and said, God, you know that guy Mike down there who dances around and throws his hands up and dances before the cross and preaches those messages at Spirit Life? I'll tell you something. The day, the day that his day gets dark and everything that you blessed him with is taken away, he will give his soul back to me. Now let me just tell you something. This is not Disney World stuff. This is true. And it's true for every single one of you sitting in this room. Whether you think that you are a powerhouse believer or not. Let me ask you this. Did you ever ask yourself these questions? Why am I so bound with anger lately? Why in the world have I been so negative? Why have I been so jealous lately? Why am I always so negative? How come I'm not on fire for God like I used to be? Why am I lusting so much lately? How about this one? I don't know why. I don't know where this foul language comes from. I got a mouth like a sewer. You have an intruder. You have an intruder. And guess what? He didn't rip the door down. He just walked right through it. But she has to have and say, what controls my thoughts? What controls, my controls, me. controls me. Come on, say it again. What controls my thought? What controls, my controls me. Yeah. Does the Holy Spirit control your thoughts? Or the enemy? Or a little bit of both? Say a little bit of both. Okay, cool. That's being honest. When you're standing between the devil and the deep blue sea, and there is nowhere to run, and there is no one watching and no one looking, and you're thirsty and you're dry and you're hungry and you're spiritually defeated, it's only then that you know whether your heart will lean towards his word or his. Now look, Satan feeds on habitual sin, not because God can't forgive the sin, but the deeper the habitual sin is, the deeper the guilt. Oh, he loves guilt. The guiltier you feel, the better he feels, because you've agreed with his word. God says, the deeper your sin, the more habitual it is, the more is my love for you. Amen. So the Satan says, stop doing this. Read a book. Pinch yourself every time you have a bad thought. Snap a rubber band on your wrist pow, every time you have a bad thought. God says, no, 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 no. Don't do any of that. Don't try to tame the flesh. God says, you can do all things through Christ. Amen. You can do all things through Christ. Amen. You mean there's no plan, no rule, no book I can read? No, 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 no. The further you are away from Christ, the closer you are to sin. Can I hear an amen? amen? Look at me. The enemy wants to rob you of the power of joy. Amen. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Here's the goal of the enemy. He watches. He looks for those rooms where the door is cracked. <laughs> And he wants to rebuild those strongholds. So what must we do? I said, what must we do? I said, what must we do? Put your hands to heaven and say, Holy Spirit, please tell Pastor Mike what we must do. <laughs> Amen.
Close the door, he says. Let's see if it lines up with my, with what the Lord showed me. You ready? Are you sure you're ready? Let's see. Say, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit. show me, show me. What, I must do. what I must do. Romans 12, 1. I beseech you, therefore, comma, brethren. We are the brethren. What does beseech mean? Listen very carefully. By the mercies of God, comma, that you present your... What did they used to present before the Christian faith as a sacrifice? A, an animal. Are you an animal? Now he wants your body. You guys with me? No more sacrifices of bulls and goats. Now he wants your body, comma, holy... Anybody in this room holy? I'm not talking about your underwear now. I'm not talking about that. Okay. He assumes you know this. Right? He assumes you know this. Comma. Acceptable. Acceptable. Are we all acceptable? Why? He assumes you know that. You do know that, don't you? You're not acceptable because you came to church, right? No. Okay. Unto God, which is your reasonable service. Verse 2. And read it with me. And be not conformed, conformed, conformed to this world. This is important. But be you transformed, transformed. Say transformed. You know what that word transform means? The word transform does not mean change. You can't change the flesh. The word transformed means metamorphosis. Say metamorphosis. Don't spit on your neighbor when you say it now. Say it again. Metamorphosis. Well, pay attention. This is important. See, see, he did not write this in the King James translation. Metamorphosis. Listen. A caterpillar becomes a butterfly. Stay with me. A caterpillar becomes a butterfly. But the butterfly was always a caterpillar. When the butterfly became a butterfly, it was always a butterfly in the caterpillar. Are you with me? You sure? The DNA, the DNA of the butterfly was in the caterpillar. He only saw himself as a caterpillar. But you know what God saw? A butterfly. You got it? When you were saved, inside of you, the day you were saved was the DNA of Christ Jesus. You may not have seen yourself a butterfly when you were a caterpillar, but you were always a butterfly to him. Amen. Be you metamorphosized. In other words, don't change. Are you paying attention? Don't you dare put that word change in here. You're not changing the flesh. You're only metamorphosizing, revealing what was already inside of you. When Jesus Christ was transfigured on the Mount of Transfiguration, for that brief moment, they saw the Lord's divinity. Amen. For that brief moment, that same divinity was in him when he walked on this earth as a man. Say, be ye metamorphosized. Do you understand that word now? All right, put your hands to heaven again. I'm doing this on purpose. I just want you to exercise like this. Say, the DNA of Jesus Christ has been in me from the beginning of time. Holy Spirit, metamorphosize. 
me in Jesus name. You got it? Okay, good, 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 good. Now that mind of yours, that mind of yours, that dirty mind of yours was darkened by sin. That's all. It is not that the caterpillar changed its basic nature. Look up here. All of you YouTubers, look up here. The caterpillar, the Christian, never changed its nature. It revealed what was always there from the beginning. Um, caterpillars can't fly, can they? Anybody ever see a caterpillar fly? Yet they were born to fly. You may not see yourself soaring like an eagle. You may see yourself waddling on a pound, quacking like a duck. But you were born to fly. Amen. You were born to soar. And you don't have to change into that. You already are that. Are you sure you understand? So, we don't close the door. We open the door. And we say to the enemy, no weapon formed against me shall ever prosper. I was born to fly. I will soar like an eagle. I will reach the heights of heaven. I will heal the sick, heal the blind, raise the dead, because that DNA is already inside of me. Now, you get out of here. I got some cleaning up to do. So you get out of here by the blood of the Lamb. You don't have to make any excuses for the enemy, what you want to be. I'm just growing and transforming and changing. Every day I'm becoming a better person. Baloney! That's just a crazy excuse for you. That's a crazy excuse for a filthy mouth. Crazy excuse to, for a rotten attitude. Say this, metamorphosis, metamorphosis reveals, reveals the character, character of what was put in me from the beginning. So when we come to Christ, we have already the DNA of Jesus Christ in us. Like the caterpillar has a DNA to fly and the tadpole to hop. We have Jesus in us. So, now although the psychologists and the philosophers and the doctors and Oprah and all those wonderful people will suggest to you things you must do to change, Pastor Mike is telling you what he's telling you because you can try to change all you want. And when you change, and for one week or two weeks or three weeks, you are so good and you feel so good about yourself. I haven't sworn once. I haven't gossiped once. I've been so good. I've been to church every week in the Bible, everything. I am such a good person. Fooey on youy. There is nothing good in you. Say, there is nothing good in me. I know you don't like saying that because you feel so good about yourself. The only thing good about you is Jesus in you. Now listen, that may not give you the answer that you're looking for for me. Like, it'd be different if I said, um, if you really want to break down the barriers and those strongholds, just read this book. Just listen to this tape. Right? We're all looking for those fixes. And the TV is loaded with people that'll teach you that nonsense. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, where the Spirit of the Lord is. Come on, can you finish that sentence? I didn't make this up. Now, where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. 
Let me show you this, because the word metamorphosis is even in that scripture. Can you handle 10 more Mike DeRoche minutes? Yeah. Yeah. I just want to warn you guys that 10 minutes could mean more minutes. Amen? Yeah. 2 Corinthians 3.17, and we'll wrap this up. Amen? Now, the Lord is that spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Watch this. But we all, comma, with open face, beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord, are changed. Go to the next verse, 18. Changed. You see this word changed? Wrong word. You know what goes right there? Yeah. That needs to come out. We throw it away and put metamorphosis. Now read it. Read it with that word in there. But we all with open face, beholding as in a glass, the glory of the Lord, are metamorphosized into the same image. From glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. Isn't it great when you know what the real word is? Amen? Say wow. Say wow. So we don't close the door. That would be a work of the flesh. Say, the DNA of Christ is in me. Say, the DNA of Christ in me. Now use it. Listen, I'll say this and close. I think this is my last little, okay. You, are you all paying attention? You may not think that you can fly. But that DNA of Christ is already on the inside of you. But the enemy has found a crack in the door. It's not that you did a boo-boo. Are you paying attention? It's not because you did something wrong. It's when your heart was convicted. You fail to declare that for where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. I am a child of God. And there is no condemnation for those that are in Christ Jesus. So let me ask you this morning, where are your troubles today? Is it drinking? Is it gambling? Is it pornography? Is it addiction? Is it anger? Is it sickness? The world says, separate from these things. Mm -mm. Get this, please. The world says, stop it. Meeting Jesus Accepting him as your savior does not mean you give up drinking. When you place your heart on Christ, that DNA comes alive. And you don't have to give these things up. These things will give you up. I think I need to say that again. I'll tell you why, because you see, the Adamic brain matter that sits between these two ears does not want to help you through this. Do you remember in the beginning of the message that I told you that the devil made a bet with God? Does anybody by chance have a hard time swallowing that? Don't. And if it's kind of stuck there in your throat, just, just go, oh, let it go down. I don't care what they say out there about this. I know this stuff, guys. Meeting Jesus Christ 
and accepting him as your savior does not mean you must give up drinking, gambling, smoking, whatever you do. When you place your mind on Christ, that DNA that was placed in you from the foundations of the world becomes alive. You don't have to give anything up. Those things will give you up. Thou shalt keep thee in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee. There are things in my life that are so far behind me. I only can tell you it had nothing to do with me giving them up. That those things gave me up. Say this with me. Thou shall keep thee in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on me. So what must we do? Read a book? Go to church more? When the enemy comes at you and says, you see, I told you he's nothing but a filthy rotten pig he hasn't changed at all back to his same old ways back to his same old sins drinking and smoking and lusting god i told you i told you he'd never change that's when you stand up and you say for it is written Thou shall never leave thee. Thou shall never forsake thee. The DNA of Jesus Christ is in my bones. And nothing, church. Let those hands down and say nothing. Come on, you know it. Nothing. So when you commit your dirty deed this week, whatever it may be, it may be stealing a pen from work or sugar from Dunkin' Donuts, I could only tell you this. God loves you infinitely. And you, folks, are soaring like eagles. You can fly. But you must see it. Close your Bibles. Stand to your feet and give the Lord a shout. Come on, give the Lord a shout of praise. So have given the opportunity to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Please feel free to contact us at www.spiritlifeworshipchurch.com. Our phone number is 386-586-2202. And our service begins 10 a.m. on Sunday mornings. Can't wait to see you guys. God bless. God bless. I hope this video was a blessing to you. And if it was, please don't forget to subscribe below and put your comments down there as well. Also, if you are interested in making a donation to this ministry, uh, please go ahead in the description box. There's a link down there for you to make your donation. Also, please check out our website. It's also in the description box as well. May God bless you. Thank you for watching. See you around.